are already a few weeks into summer and we actually have a big trip to Montana planned that is where Kyle and I are from originally. One of Kyle's cousins is getting married and then also just to spend time with family this summer. So we're really excited, but needless to say, there are like a thousand things that I need to get done before we leave. So I figured I would take you guys along with me as I prepare for our vacation. Now, before we get into all of that, I wanted to share something really fun with you. So as many of you may know, I have Hashimoto's and I've struggled with my weight for the past few years because of that. And I recently, or somewhat recently, lost about 25 pounds, which has been amazing, but I've really been feeling like I need to kind of refresh my wardrobe a little bit. And especially with summer and our trip coming up and everything, it's just like the perfect time. So I am so beyond excited to be teaming up with Stitch Fix in today's video. Kyle has actually been using Stitch Fix for the past maybe like a little bit over three years and he's loved it. So I'm like very, very familiar with how it all works, but I did get my package in the mail a few days ago and I have been waiting to open it up so we could do it together. So let's go ahead, try on some clothes and then we will get into my forever long to-do list. I wanna hear you say I, 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 so if you're unfamiliar with Stitch Fix or you have never tried them out before, basically they are a personal style service for men, women, and kids. Kyle's used them for a really long time, but this is my first time being styled with them and I'm so excited because I've just seen a lot of the pieces and it's kind of like evolved his style over the years. So how it works is you will go on their website or their app and then fill out a quiz just to kind of help Stitch Fix learn what you love. And your stylist will send you items that reflect your style, your fit, and your price points. Then you get your packages in the mail, you're able to try them on, see what you love, see what you don't, and then anything you love you can keep. Anything you don't love, go ahead and send back and they actually give you a free return label and a bag and everything so that you can send it back so effortlessly. So we are going to kind of go through everything that I got. You guys can tell me what you think of everything. Another thing that I wanted to mention that I've seen with Kyle's Stitch Fix throughout the years that I'm really excited to see with my own is you'll usually continue to have the same stylist unless if you kind of opt for a new stylist. And so they really learn your fit, your style. After a while, like he was keeping every single thing he got because it fit perfectly. It was totally his style. And it's just really cool to see that kind of happen over time. So this time I am not keeping just a few pieces because of the fit, but I'm sure that as things go on, like my stylist Angela will learn more and more about me and be able to style me like even better. So if you want to check out Stitch Fix for yourself, I will have that link in my bio that you can check out. You guys will love it. All right, so you'll have to let me know, would you ever wear those like really colorful bottoms like I got? At first, I was a little bit out of my comfort zone getting those, but I've worn them now like a few times and every time I do, I just love them even more. I feel like it's like such a fun pop of color, perfect for summer, of course, but even just throughout the year, it's just really fun to kind of have something a little colorful on bottom because at least for me, I usually will just wear, you know, regular jeans or black leggings or something. Definitely not a lot of color going on down below my waist. So it was just a lot of fun to get something really different. And I also wanted to mention, I love the quality of clothes that you get from Stitch Fix. I really noticed that a lot over the years with Kyle's clothes. Like whenever we end up decluttering anything, his clothes that he gets from them does not ever go because they just stay in really good shape because they started out being a lot higher quality than clothes that you might get from a regular everyday store. So anyway, here I'm just going ahead and putting everything away, hanging things up in our closet, and then I'm going to make our bed for the day, and then we will get into a little bit of laundry motivation because I feel like we can all always use a little bit of laundry motivation because when is there not more laundry to get done?
I recently ordered some new Eurosham pillow covers and inserts and I am finally taking them out of the packaging and going ahead and getting them put on the bed. I've wanted to do this for a while and it's just been not even on my mind lately. So now that we've kind of finished up a lot of house projects, of course our kitchen renovation and all that, we're just able to kind of push our mind into some other things. And I did want to share a great tip. If you order pillow inserts online, you'll notice they come very, very squished up into a tiny box. And so the best way that I've found to really fluff them up is by popping them in the dryer. So you will notice how incredibly fluffy they are in just a minute. When we pull them out of the dryer, it's amazing. All right, you have to let me know, do you have throw pillows on your bed? Sometimes I honestly will debate like not having them on our bed and just going with our regular pillows that we sleep with every night, just because it is, you know, kind of annoying. It's just one extra step that you have to do each day. But I also feel like it's so comfortable when you go sit on the bed, maybe you're working on your bed or maybe you're folding laundry, whatever the case may be. It's really comfortable to go sit in your room up against all those pillows. It's just so cozy. And of course, I'm just a sucker for how it looks. I feel like it looks so pretty. So I still keep doing it, but let me know in the comments if you have any throw pillows on your bed or if you are not a fan of them. Let's play a quick little game of would you rather. This is like one of my kids' favorite games to play, especially Liam's. He will play this all day long, but like anytime we're in the car, or we're bored or whatever, I feel like we always start up a game of would you rather and it just entertains them to no end. So anyway, my would you rather question is, would you rather never ever do laundry again, specifically putting laundry away, or would you choose to never clean your bathroom again? I feel like this is a very close comparison for me, but with a house full of boys, I would have to say to never clean bathrooms again because, you know, I don't need to get into it. I'm sure you know exactly why, but laundry, I have to say, would be a very close second. Laundry is really not all that terrible, but having to do it so often and just how time consuming it can be to like put everything away, I think that's what gets me about laundry, but I'd still go with bathrooms. All right, now that everything is nice and clean in our bedroom, I just wanted to get the floors tackled, but I didn't want to take the time to do it. So I am just taking the convenient route and letting our robot vacuum take care of the floors for me. We are going to clean the kitchen and all the other things and get the dog ready, like all this stuff, but I need to quickly try to make a to-do list and I also wanna make my packing list. If you guys have a good way to do this, let me know. I just go old style with pen and paper and it, it works. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and make all that real quick and then we'll get to everything else. Okay, 
so I know I'm sure I'm gonna like figure out more things that we need but this is how I typically do my list and I feel like it's a little bit redundant because like I write the same thing across but this way basically I will go into like each person's room cross it off so I have like how many they need of everything and then the item that way I just know like I never really miss anything this way and then I do the same thing these are like toiletry items obviously I have the most items and like Liam and Noah the only thing I can think of right now is like their toothbrushes and stuff but I'm sure I'll think of more things as I go but usually I make this list like the night before or something so I'm actually ahead of schedule because we still have a little bit of time before we go. So I won't be packing this today, but this way I have my list and I can just be really thorough. This is one of the first like big trips that our family has taken in a while. For a long time, we've lived in driving distance. Like we lived 13 hours away and then we lived in Utah like seven hours away, but here we're about 20 hours. And so we just are not gonna drive it really. I mean, like we actually were thinking about it, but we ended up being able to find some really cheap flights. And so we are going to fly. Anytime we go on a trip, I really want to make sure that everything is clean. Cause like you just never want to come home to a big mess. And so I'm just gonna go through, be pretty thorough and like clean everything up. We're gonna start in the kitchen and then I actually need to go wash Emma because our friends are going to be watching her thankfully for us and I don't want to give them a stinky dog. It feels really good having my list done and then this to-do list before <laughs> we leave is just, I'm sure gonna be like added on to but I feel like it's already pretty long. We have a lot of things to do and not a lot of time to do them. So let's get back to it. the fountain of you i can hear them talking so far away from the truth you and me won't take notice of any smooth talk or bad vibes coming up and you know it you and me we're staying So as you may know, we got a new cooktop. It's actually an induction cooktop. Whenever we did our kitchen renovation, we replaced our old, not really working very well, um, electric cooktop. And I'm so happy, like I love the induction so much. But one thing with them is they can be a little finicky with like which pots and pans work really well with them. And my beautiful terracotta colored ones, don't work the best with them. So I'm actually washing these up. I'm going to be giving these to my sister. And then I'm also washing up all the new pots and pans. We were at Costco the other day and they had a great deal on these. And Kyle's actually had his eyes on these ones for a while. I guess he was going to surprise me with a new pots and pans set because he had kind of held back some money from our kitchen renovation. And so that was really exciting because I didn't know that new pots and pans were like in the budget, but it worked out that way and I am so in love with the new pans. I feel like they're working super, super well. It's really neat because they're actually a hybrid of stainless steel and nonstick. So if you're interested in checking them out, I'll link them down below. You definitely don't need to have induction cooktops to have them, but they are just like a really nice high quality pots and pans set.
Cause what we got is timeless, we still proceed And we hold in the key, yeah we tight as can be We're rolling, we're rolling just like we please Oh my gosh, whenever I was folding all of my kitchen towels, I seriously noticed I really need to boil my e-cloths again. I've shared that here on the channel before, but I like to boil them every few months and they are like in desperate need of that. But I'm also wanting to strip our laundry and just get those really nice and clean. But before I do that, I would actually love to get any of your tips on stripping laundry, if you have any. If you've done that before and you've learned anything, let me know, because that's gonna be coming up pretty soon. Probably once we get back from our trip, I'll end up stripping our laundry and getting that kind of taken care of. Tell me what your summer cleaning routine has been like, or have you not had one? I do kind of have like a morning and night routine, but I really struggle with summer cleaning routines. It feels like it's a lot of time. It's just pretty chaotic. But this summer we've actually done really well. We have a family cleaning routine. We do like a whole house pickup in the morning and then a whole house pickup at night. And then I've just kind of been doing, you know, whatever deep cleaning, whenever it needs to be done. I definitely don't feel like that's the most effective way to do it, but it's kind of worked and I'll work on my cleaning routine another day. Also, let me know, do you have any trips planned this summer? I'm like very torn right now like i'm excited for the trip i'm excited to see family i'm excited for all that fun stuff but i feel like as an adult there is so much that you have to get done before a trip that i'm like questioning is it even worth it like <laughs> or would it just be a lot easier to just stay home and hang out here i think once we're there it'll be so much fun and it'll be like oh yeah all this work was totally worth it but when you're in the thick of it honestly it just makes me tired and it makes me really miss being a kid when like all you had to do was worry about packing your own bag and saying bye to your friends for a week. But probably I should just take my own advice that I give my kids all the time and not really take life too seriously. Like we only get one life, so just do what we can to enjoy it and not worry about all the pressures that honestly we probably just put on ourselves that really aren't actually necessary. All right, I wanna talk about this pet feeder for just a second because anytime you guys see it, you always ask like, what is that? If we like it, how long we've had it, all that stuff. So we have had this for several years. We got it back when we lived in Utah and I love it because as you can see, like anytime the water will slosh out of the top, it goes into the holes and into that bottom compartment, which means that if you have wood floors, things like that, you're not going to be damaging your floors with a bunch of water damage. Um, and for us, like we have a bunch of pets and so we definitely need something with big capacity like this. Now this does come in a few different sizes, but we also, you know, need something that is pretty easy to manage and something that won't damage our floors. And so this has worked so perfectly. Now we actually feed our cats with an automatic feeder and then we feed Emma some wet food, which you'll see in just a minute. So this feeder has actually kind of converted for us into just a really big water feeder, but it's worked out super, super well. But as you can see, it needed a little love. It needed some cleaning. So I took it outside, scrubbed it down, and then I'm just letting it dry. And then I'm going to go ahead and give Emma a good bath. I mean, she really just needed it anyway, but especially since we are having people watch her, I just don't want her to be a stinky dog at their house. So she's going to get a nice bath and get all fresh and clean. She's all fresh and clean. Good girl. She's like, okay, now I want a snack. <laughs> She's like, I did so good. Oh, and those nice clean windows. I wonder how they get so dirty. Are you ready? Look how fluffy. Okay, Emma, you want your food? Emma, do you want your food? 
Do you want your food? Okay. Okay. You are gonna have to wait out here. Okay, Emma, go lay down. Go lay down, I'll go get you your food. Oh, they locked me out. So we actually just had Noah's birthday party. He turned seven, which that's a whole nother topic. I just can't believe he's seven. So I just went outside and tackled that really quick. And then I was talking to one of my friends about this, but I feel like we put so much pressure on ourselves to do these like really elaborate, fully themed birthday parties. And in the end, I feel like it's something that's really not necessary for our kids. Like I can speak for our kids, they really don't care so much about that. With Noah, his party was so simple. We had a cake. I did do a little pinata. We had swimming. We had friends over, some pizza. Like he had a blast and there were no themes, no elaborate decorations. It was just very simple and it was honestly just perfect. And I just thought about that when I was getting ready for his party because at first I was feeling really guilty, like, oh, I'm only gonna be able to have time to do, you know, just like a regular party, like nothing elaborate or fancy. And then it was like, you know, he really wasn't missing out on anything. And so it just kind of gave me that peace. So if you ever feel that same way, give yourself some peace too because kids really don't need a whole lot to be impressed and be very grateful for what they have. Here, I just actually went outside to grab our rug. We had actually laid it outside just to kind of loosen the fibers and allow the heat from the sun to kind of help it lay a little bit more flat in the kitchen. All right, Luke just got home from camp like, I don't know, an hour ago or so. So he brought in all of his stinky camp stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and run whatever I can through the wash, get that put away, and then we're gonna continue on with cleaning. I'm wondering how many men that you trapped then up in the ocean. I wish that I could understand. Do your kids go to camp during the summer or like multiple camps during the summer? Or did you usually go to a camp during the summer? I feel like a lot of my friends are like, yeah, our kids go to camp like every single year and I maybe just am not on top of it enough, but I feel like a lot of summers we don't do any camps for our kids really. But Luke had so much fun at this camp that it kind of makes me feel like maybe we should make that a priority and try to get our kids in at least like one camp during the summer. Choose to let this slip, but I'm here somewhere in the ocean. Still wrapped around your fingertips, just like beating around the bush. I'm half the man I used to be after being dumped in the ocean. I bet that you don't even care if my body drifts ashore. Here in the ocean.
pretty sure that I'll come running. Though I should say, no, 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 no. All right, let me know what is on your to-do list every time you go on a vacation or a trip. Definitely like one of the top things that I make sure that I do every single time is clean the entire house. Everything needs to be put away, pretty much wiped down, all dishes, all that kind of stuff. Like everything just needs to be really clean. Also our fridge, I won't do that until like the night before we leave. But for me, like that is so necessary to get your house totally clean because I feel like when you get back from a vacation, walking into a house that is unclean just feels so stale and then like you're already tired from your trip and then you get back and have to do a bunch of work cleaning your house it's just a big no for me so i will get no sleep the night before if i didn't get it done earlier but i will not leave the house without cleaning it like it's a non-negotiable for me Emma is getting older. Gosh, okay, I'm gonna have to think for a second how old she is. So she was born actually on doomsday, which was December 21st, 2012. So it's 2023 now. So she is going to be, is that right? She would be turning 11. I think she just turned 10 this last December. So yeah, she is like 10 and a half years old now. So she definitely sleeps and rests a lot more than she did when she was younger, but she has been such a good dog. She is a border collie and I honestly love that breed. I feel like they're the perfect size. They're very great family dogs and we've just loved having her now funny enough i'm actually allergic to dogs like when i pet emma i actually have to go wash my hands right after because if i touch my eye it will swell up like the white of my eye will get so swollen so that's kind of annoying but it's worth it but let me know in the comments do you have a dog or dogs and if so what kind like tell me what breed they are Oh, the joys of working from home. It's actually like a huge blessing. I'm so thankful to be able to work from home, but it's definitely a struggle just having your office and having your work be right in your home. Like there's not a lot of separation. So I feel like the work home balance is always a struggle. It's something I'm always working on. And it's funny because I'm 33 now and I just remember growing up thinking like parents and adults, like they just had their life together. Like they knew all the things, they did life perfectly, like all that stuff. And now that I'm in their shoes, I'm like, just winging it constantly trying to do my best but it's funny how when you're a kid like your perception of life is just so different than how it really is which is great because i think it's great for kids to not understand all the elements of life and you know just have a little bit more simple life but it's just always funny to me how i just had this like amazing perception of adults like having everything together and it's just not that way I was not planning on sharing a recipe in today's video. However, I'm gonna make dinner anyway, so I figured I might as well share with you guys because I've never shared this before. So this is how I make ramen. It is one of my family's favorites. Like they always ask for it when it's their birthday, they ask for ramen, like they love this stuff. So all I do is I do go to like the Asian aisle with Korean and Japanese style food and I will get like an authentic, at least as authentic as you can get here in the US. And then I also get a pork loin. I typically will try to get like a teriyaki one. They didn't have any. So this is just a roasted garlic and herb marinated pork loin. Then you will add in some eggs. We are going to try to soft boil these. I try to soft boil them as best I can. And then we're also going to saute up some cabbage. Now I actually will use cabbage for my noodles because I'm 
gluten-free typically. For everyone else, they will just add the cabbage on as a topping. Do what you want, but if you are gluten-free as well and you don't wanna do like a specialty gluten-free noodle, the cabbage actually tastes amazing and you really don't miss, or at least for me, like I really don't miss not having the noodles. Okay, so to start this out, I just pulled out my Instant Pot. You don't have to have an Instant Pot. You can do this over the stove or however you want. But if you have an Instant Pot, I just put the pork loin in for 15 minutes. I had about one cup of water, which allows it to come to pressure. And then if you are not using a pre-marinated pork loin, I would just suggest adding in your own seasonings, but either way is fine. Next, you're going to fill a large pot with water and I add in extra water than the packaging actually says because I will be using the broth packets, but I do like to add my own flavor to that as well. And we just like to have a little bit extra broth. And then you just wanna go ahead and heat that water to a boil. And then while that is heating up, I go ahead and chop up all my cabbage and I saute that with a little oil and salt and pepper. Then I go ahead and boil my eggs, and I only ever cook boiled eggs in this little egg cooker. It just makes the perfect eggs every single time, and I love it so much. So as you can see, everything kind of gets started, and then it just cooks all at once. And then once the water is boiling, you're going to add in your noodles, the flavor packets, one tablespoon of oil, and then I did forget to show you guys this, but I do also love to add in fresh ginger or the pre-minced ginger like this, and it will just add such an amazing element of flavor to this. So you're just going to cook the noodles until they're soft and cook the cabbage until it's softened down as well. Then by this time, usually the eggs are done cooking, and so I put those immediately into an ice bath just to stop the cooking. And then I'll go ahead and just prep any toppings like green onions or extra veggies, like I'm cutting up some sugar snap peas right here, but you can really add whatever you want. And then once the pork is all done, I drain off the liquid, slice it up, return it to my Instant Pot, and then I just like to saute it for a few more minutes and make sure that it's completely done cooking because you do not want raw pork. Then last, you are just going to add your noodles to a bowl, add whatever toppings, and then pour the broth right over top and enjoy. That's all there is to this, but it is so delicious. Let me know if your mouth is watering from this because mine totally is. Once we finished dinner, we just went ahead and tidied the kitchen for the evening. Now, like I mentioned, there is still more to do on my to-do list and getting ready for our trip. Like for example, I need to go through our fridge, we need to pack, like all that kind of stuff, but it does feel so good to get so much checked off the list and get the house really nice and clean before our trip. Now, don't forget to check out Stitch Fix and take your own style quiz using my link down below. And thank you so much for watching and hanging out with me today. Also, if you're still here, let me know, would you rather see a super relaxing after dark clean with me next week, or would you rather see an updated house tour? 
I'm definitely going to share both of those videos, but whatever you guys vote on is what we will share next week. And then the other one will go after. So let me know in the comments. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel, be sure you subscribe down below and I will see you right back here in the next video. Bye guys.